Welcome, welcome families. Um, let me share my screen with you. I am Ms. Larashi. I am the facilitator for today's session. And just a moment here as we switch out some screens. And let's see, technology, here she comes. Okay, so welcome students, families, and counselors from across the state of Missouri. I am uh, Ms. Larashi. I'm the college and career coordinator at a high school here in St. Louis, Pattonville High School, if there's any pirates out there. Uh, very pleased to facilitate today's uh, session. So just a few housekeeping um, notes here before I turn it over to our presenters. So thank you again for joining us. Um, this is a webinar, which means that the presenters cannot see or hear you. The way that you'll ask questions is to type your question into the Q&A box. I believe the presenters are going to share their information and then towards the end, uh, they'll open up the Q&A and start answering your questions. So, and don't worry if they don't get to all the questions, they will get your information and your question after the session. And I'm sure they will be happy to follow up with you directly to answer any questions um, that we're not able to get to in this 45 minutes. So again, remember your camera and microphone are off. Everything needs to go in the Q&A box. Uh, we also want to thank you for being here today and to encourage you to uh, sign up for more of our sessions. We will be doing sessions until October 8th. There's lots of great opportunities and I believe every single one of our schools today has an individual session coming up later on. So you can find those sessions on our schedule at moacac.org. And lastly, this session will be recorded. So if you have to um, step away or you want to come back and watch it again. Um, these sessions will be up on our website. That again is moacac.org. They'll be up in the next few days so you can check them out there. All right, uh, without further ado, I'm going to turn myself off and let the presentation begin. Thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Tom Emery with Lindenwood University in St. Charles, Missouri. Um, I am the NCAA Liaison and Admissions Counselor for Lindenwood and what that means is basically that I work with all incoming freshmen or transfers in working through the admissions process um, for Lindenwood and I specifically work with athletes that are coming in because there's a couple different things that are that we have to do that are maybe different from just our general population student. Um, next slide please. So I'm going to focus on Division One and Division Two athletics because at Lindenwood we do have both and kind of what you need to know about the differences between division one and two and how to go about maybe getting recruited and we'll talk about some of those things as well so next slide please so everybody kind of has an idea of what d1 is right it's what you see on saturday afternoons maybe thursday nights with football that kind of thing they're the ones that the schools that are typically largest and most visible um, there are 350 schools that participate in Division I athletics with a roughly 170,000 student athletes. Um, they must have seven men's sports, seven women's sports, and they have a whole lot more funds than maybe some of the rest of us do to spend. It's very competitive um, to be on one of those teams. You pretty much have to be at the highest level of competition uh, to be recruited. There are quite a few time requirements with a Division I sport. D2 schools are a little bit less. There's 310 of us, 120,000 student athletes participate in D2 athletics. It's probably more focused on balancing academics and athletics. It's more of a pure student athlete type situation. Moderate funding, there's fewer athletic scholarships in D2 than there are in D1, and maybe not fewer in terms of number, but fewer in terms of total dollars. 
that go out there. Um, it is still very competitive to uh, be recruited for a D2 school. Uh, next slide, please. So how do I get recruited? And I hear this question all the time, and it is a recruiting situation in Division One and Division Two, and probably in the others as well, D3 and NEIA, uh, as well as the, the two I'm going to talk about. One thing you need to remember is that coaches recruit athletes that fit a need for their program. Let me give you an example. If a men's basketball team has three point guards and one of them is a sophomore, one of them is a junior, and one of them is a senior, they may not need another point guard for a year or two. So they may not be recruiting for that particular position. So it does kind of depend upon the needs of the program. My advice after a lot of years of experience of this is to take control of the process. Um, you have to be proactive. Make a list of the schools that you think will fit both athletically, academically, and socially. And once you have that list, go to the website, find the coaches' names, send them an email, make a phone call, and I cannot stress this more, you need to send video. If you don't have video, and in some sports that's really hard, for instance, golf, that's a little bit harder than others, but if you have video, send it. Coaches like video versus stats. So if you have a video, even if you don't have a video, I would make some video real quick, put it on a YouTube channel, um, it's free, and send that link to the coaching staff because that will trip their trigger a little bit to get them to possibly put you on their radar. Finally, be pleasantly persistent. Here's what that means. That means that you will send an email and you may not hear back from them for a couple of weeks. And it's not because they don't love you, it's because they're busy and they get thousands of emails in a, over a recruiting season. So be pleasantly persistent know what the timelines are for the recruiting of certain sports, know what the recruitment rules are, and just keep after them and you'll nev you never know. I had a young lady playing golf that she had not heard anything from coaches for six months. Finally, they hit her up and she's now at Lindenwood with a scholarship. So be pleasantly persistent. And then finally, if a school has a camp, attend a camp. Get in front of those coaches to uh, show what your talents are. Next slide, please. So the NCAA Clearinghouse, this is sometimes misunderstood. It is totally separate from admissions processes on a college campus, but it's something that a Division I or Division II prospective athlete must do. Um, you have to register with the NCAA Clearinghouse in order to make an official visit. The difference between an official visit and an unofficial visit is that an official visit is usually the coaches invite you and then they will give you the tour and show you around. And even in some cases, it's on their dime. An unofficial visit, you pay for the entire visit and you're pretty much going to be, you will maybe meet with a coach, but it's going to be your tour and visit will primarily be through an admissions office. Um, when to register? If you're a junior, you need to register now. If you're a senior, you definitely need to register now. Uh, there is no deadline, but you can, cannot sign a national letter of intent and no scholarship offers can be given to you if you are not registered through the clearinghouse. If you have questions, seek out one of your coaches, they should know, or your guidance counselor at school, they should know. Next slide, please. So how do I go about registering? There is the um, URL for the actual website, the eligibility center. You will create an account. I want you to notice that there is a fee. It's a $90 fee. So if, if you're pretty sure you're gonna be recruited, if the coaches have been talking to you, whatever, then it's, it's worth it. If you're not sure, maybe hold off, but there, it does cost $90. You're going to have to send a high school transcript 
semester six, which is after your junior year, and you are required to send SAT and ACT or ACT scores, not both, but one or the other, to the website. That is the way eligibility is determined. And then you will have to complete a form saying that you have not ever been paid to play your sport. Next slide, please. So there are some eligibility requirements and they differ between division one and division two. I am not gonna go through each and every one of these. You can go to the NCAA Clearinghouse website and you can see these. But the most important thing is if you think you're going to be recruited, you need to get with your guidance counselor to make sure that you have the core courses required by each division. You'll notice that there are some subtle differences, but you just need to make sure that with your counselor that you have fulfilled all of the core course requirements to be eligible to play a sport at an NCAA Division I or Division II school. Next slide, please. So your eligibility is a combination of your grade point average and test score. And so D1 requires a 2.3, D2 requires a 2.2. The test scores, it's all on a sliding scale and it is super scored by the way, which just means that it's, we take the higher grade, the higher score on your test. So it is a sliding scale. So basically in a nutshell, let me explain. The higher your GPA, the lower your test score can be. And that's just the way it works. So make sure again that you check with your guidance counselor. The coach at the university or college will help you as well through that. Next slide. <clears throat> So let's talk a little bit about Lindenwood. I, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about Lindenwood a little bit. So we have 11 men's and 11 women's D2 teams. The men's teams are listed there. The women's teams are listed there. We are unique in that we, all, we also have some Division I teams. They participate in the, at the Division I level. Men's volleyball is one of those. The reason for that is, is there just isn't many D2 schools that play volleyball. So we were kind of, our hand was forced and we are a D1 in volleyball. Women's gymnastics is also a division one sport at Lindenwood. And then women's ice hockey is a division one sport at our school. Next slide, please. We also have what are called, we call them SLS sports, which stands for student life sports. Do not let this name fool you. They are very competitive. They're, it's not just club, but they may belong to a different conference or they may be in a very competitive nationwide type club scenario. Men's and women's bowling, cheerleading at our place is a sport. Cycling, so on and so forth. Um, the bottom line is we have over 40 different sports teams on our campus. So we have a lot of opportunity for you to continue to do what you love to do and participate in a sport and get a great education at the same time. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so at Lindenwood, how do you go about it? Well, our application is on our website. We are a common app school, but to be honest, I prefer you uh, apply through the Lindenwood website because all the information then gets into our system and nothing gets lost and I don't have to try to track you down. Official transcripts, see your counselor, ask them to send those to us. They'll know what to do. Um, we are a test optional school. What that means is we, you, it's your choice as to whether or not you wanna submit a test score for admissions purposes or not. If you're an athlete, again, you have to submit it to the eligibility center, but for admission into the university, you do not have to necessarily report that test score to us. It will not make a difference in your academic merit award. So if your test score is a little lower than your performance, and basically you can base it upon the national average for ACT or SAT, then choose test optional on your application. We encourage everybody to file a FAFSA, even if you don't think you're gonna get a Pell Grant or an award that way, we do encourage you to do that because without FAFSA being on file, 
you will not qualify for student loans. So you have to have that on file. And then finally, the proof's in the pudding, so come see us. I think you'll find that we have a beautiful campus. We're in St. Charles, Missouri. We are a suburban school. Those of you in St. Louis, it's okay to cross that Missouri River. It's okay. Um, and just come see us. You can set that up on using that website. Last slide, please. We do have some financial aid assistance other than athletic awards. The athletic awards come from the coaches. The merit awards come from admissions. There's a range there. We have a premier scholarship called the Sibley Award. We have other scholarships that are endowed scholarships. And then we have added a few as well that didn't make on the slide in time because I just got word of those yesterday. So there are financial assistance available to you. So we'll talk as you go through the process. Next slide, please. <clears throat> there you go. Thank you. Hi, how's it going? My name is John Martin III. I'm with Westminster College. I'm the Northwest Missouri and uh, Kansas, as well as an all non-travel states rep. And I'll be talking to you guys about Division Three athletics. Uh, we at Westminster College are located right here in Fulton, Missouri, um, about 30 minutes away from Columbia and 30 minutes away from Jefferson City. Uh, next slide, please. So how does it all work? Recruitment on a D3 level actually works on a referral based system. So it can be referred to as from a player to player referral, a coach to player referral, or even a parent to player referral. Also being scouted during athletic competition. That means coaches are out there, they're in the community out there watching you compete in your games. Or also it could just be simply by displaying interest at your current institution. For example, you can be there as a student currently and have interest or a passion for a sport and have the opportunity to play that sport just by going to go talk to that coach. Uh, next slide. So the policies for student athletes on the division three level, all policies are predicated by the institution, which means at Westminster, your eligibility is dependent upon having SAP, which is satisfactory academic progress. So for freshmen coming in, you must have a 1.65 GPA for sophomores a 1.85 and for juniors, you must have a 2.0, which is the same requirements for graduation. Uh, next slide. So we have a few different types of uh, financial aid that we'll go over. Uh, Westminster College is test optional, and all of our students are guaranteed a scholarship, a merit-based scholarship, no matter what. So they range from 10,000 to 80,000 to even a full tuition award. And these are dependent upon your ACT score as well as your GPA. And also, if you do not have an ACT or SAT score, we are still able to figure out your financial eligibility for your merit-based scholarship, just depending off a few factors. Uh, next score. So the other types of aids we offer are endowed scholarships. They range up to $7,000. We offer alumni sibling award, a Westminster grant, and a FAFSA priority award for getting your FAFSA done by November 15th. We also offer scholarships for transfers, which are the Phi Theta Kappa Scholarship, Honors Transfer Scholarship, Collins Transfer Scholarship, and Founders Transfer Scholarship. So there's no lack of aid. Uh, next slide. Along with that, so with the COVID impacts going on, all of our sports have been moved to the spring. Um, as well as that, we have brought in the test optional factor because we understand that during these times, a lot of people aren't able to get their ACT or SAT scores done in time. And, um, so we just wanted to give everybody still the opportunity to attend an institution like Westminster College. Next slide. So along with that, if you want more information, you can always contact us at wcmo.edu or scan the QR code. And um, we do have a number of athletic programs, a number of very good academic programs where on the division three level, it's more of a balance between being a student and an athlete. Next slide. Okay, thank you so much, John. So my name is Jenny and I'm an assistant director of admissions at Fonbon University. And I'm just gonna talk to you a little bit about Fonbon and how our academics work as well as our athletics. So what do you know about Fonbon? Fonbon is located in Clayton, Missouri, which is right outside of the St. Louis City area. Uh, we have 1200 students and that includes our undergraduate, graduate and doctoral students. And we offer over 40 majors for students to choose from. And we also are division three for athletics. So I'll build a little bit on what John from Westminster has already talked about. 
and just dig a little bit deeper into Division Three in general. Okay, so what does Division Three mean and why do it? Athletes in Division Three are subject to the same standards as non-athletes for admission, academic, and housing standards. So that just basically means they do not receive preferential treatment. A lot of the times with Division I or Division II, they may receive that, but with Division III, they absolutely do not. Uh, Division III also has an emphasis on community service, and it provides a well-rounded collegiate experience. So Division III is the only division that does not award athletic scholarships. Division III athlete, student athletes compete not for financial reward, but for quite simply the love of the game. Um, also, it's a, a well-rounded experience, like I said, and so it's not unusual to see a student athlete be the star of a school play or president of the Student Government Association and be a participant on their athletic team. And also just to build on that community service that I had mentioned, um, at FOMPON, we've actually volunteered with Special Olympics, food banks, homeless shelters, and free youth camps, just to name a few. All right, so John already talked a little bit about the effects of COVID-19. Um, so unfortunately, there are no fall sports. We're waiting to hear a decision about winter sports, and then some sports will have practices. So the practices are being phased in as per CDC and NCAA guidelines. Uh, typically, students have eight semesters of eligibility. So the NCAA has said that if a student plays less than 50% of their season, there are opportunities that exist per the NCAA for return of seasons of eligibility based upon the use of practices and competition for sport. So I know that that was a lot, um, but basically that just means if your season has been affected by COVID and you haven't been able to play 50% um, or more of your season, you could potentially play for a ninth semester or a 10th semester and so on. Um, and that's just able, uh, that's just allowing you the opportunity to continue to play um, and extending that opportunity. And our students have actually been empowered to choose whether or not they want to participate due to COVID-19, um, just based on their health and safety um, guidelines and how they feel about that. So these are the athletics that we offer at Fompon. All the ones in gray, we have both men's and women's sports for, and we are in the SLIAC conference, which is the St. Louis Interco Intercollegiate Athletic Conference. And so with those sports in gray, uh, they are Division Three, so like I said, unfortunately, you cannot receive an athletic scholarship, but the ones in blue, I just want to mention, uh, they are co-ed, and we do allow students to receive athletic scholarships for just those sports because they're not regulated by NCAA Division Three. So again, you are not able to receive a, an athletic scholarship for any sport except for esports, dance, cheer, and stunt. And with those, like I said, they have that special exception to be able to have athletic awards on top of that. So we offer a variety of services for our student athletes and all students in general. We have free professional mental health counseling, a diversity and inclusion athletics committee, a strength and conditioning coach, athletic trainers, a Griffin Market, which is our food pantry, as well as the Kinkle Center. So I'll just highlight a few. Our strength and conditioning coach works with teams directly and creates both in-season and off-season workouts with a focus on injury prevention, strength, flexibility, and sports-specific instruction. Our athletic trainers, uh, we actually are blessed to have one full-time athletic trainer and two graduate assistants, which not many other universities have. And our Kinkle Center um, is actually where our mentorship programs are housed, as well as our tutoring, accommodations, and writing centers. Um, we do encourage that students get involved. If they do, here are just a few organizations they can get involved in. Fellowship of Christian Athletes, Student Athlete Advisory Committee, Griffin Gamers, um, which would be for students who do not want to participate in esports competitively, as well as intramural sports. We have a Black Student Union, um, an LGBTQ plus organization, and then also a Latino Hispanic union. Okay, so if you liked what I said during this presentation, you can apply online. It's completely free and it only takes about 10 minutes. 
Uh, what you would have to do, um, as my colleague said earlier, is request those official transcripts. And due to COVID-19, we are going test optional for the 2020 to 2021 school year temporarily. Um, another thing is that we are rolling admissions. So basically between now and next summer, you can submit an application and still be able to enroll in classes next fall. And just to help out your decision, we actually offer both virtual and on-campus tour um, options. And then you would be able to meet with a professor or a coach, either via Zoom or in person. And then the big national deadline for all colleges is May 1st. However, a lot of the times student athletes do wanna commit a lot earlier and you're welcome to do that. Next, I just wanna talk about financial aid. So if you all have the ability, you can take a picture of this just because I'm gonna highlight a few of them. So every single admitted student at Fonbon receives a merit-based scholarship and that does range from 6,500 all the way up to 15,000. We also have some stackable awards on top of that. So. Uh, we have many more than this, but I just want to highlight a few. A plus, uh, you receive an additional $1,000 on top of your merit-based scholarship. And if you're graduating from a Catholic high school, you receive an additional $2,000 on top of that merit-based scholarship. And that's before the FAFSA. Um, so there are all those outside scholarships that I'm also giving just to kind of close that gap. A lot of the times, um, you know, students receive their FAFSA and they receive great packages from there. And they had their merit-based scholarships, but sometimes they just need a little bit more to maybe cover textbooks or transportation or a little bit of that out-of-pocket costs. So FastWeb and Unigo are actually national search engines so that you can look up scholarships for anything, whether you're a soccer player or you have curly hair or you're left-handed, you can look into that. And then the last three are more Missouri specific. So the scholarship of foundation of St. Louis, My Scholarship Central, My Scholarship and Loan Foundation. They offer both private scholarships and interest-free loans for students um, who search for them. And, you know, we have a lot of free time with COVID. So you can just um, start writing some essays, just basically talking about why you're worthy of that scholarship or why you wanna go into that career or why sports is a big passion of yours. Um, but I'll be available for questions at the end of this presentation. But at this time, I just want to thank you for your time and allow Missouri Baptist to go on with their presentation. Hey, what's up guys? My name is Colton Hernandez. I'm a freshman admissions counselor at MBU. Uh, I just wanna thank you for spending some time with us just to learn a little bit more about university life, uh, college athletics, just to invest yourself uh, into your next step of life. So um, a little about me, I was a former student athlete, so I kind of understand the experience that you guys are going through um, all that information, um, all that campus life and everything. I'd love to answer any questions that you have. Um, and all, all of our contact information will be at the end of the slide here, uh, our slide. So you'll be able to take a screenshot of that or take a picture of that so you can uh, let us know any questions you have. Um, but let's talk MBU. Next slide, please. Just to start off, uh, MBU is an evangelical Christian liberal arts institution. Uh, we believe that our faith should be integrated in every aspect of college life um, and college experience, whether that is in the classroom or on the athletic field. Um, our current size of our main campus population is going to be up 1,200. Uh, sometimes if you look online, it'll say 5,000. That'll be our doctoral programs, our online programs, um, our graduate programs. This is just going to be that undergraduate main campus. Um, having that size uh, of main campus students, uh, we have a student to faculty ratio of 19 to one. So uh, pretty small. Um, as you go through your uh, and get more specialized in your junior and senior year for your degree, um, it'll get smaller and smaller. Um, so we are located in West County, St. Louis, um, more in the town and country area, uh, which is only about 20 minutes west of the city. So um, it's a great place to be uh, only about 20 minutes from all the cards games, blues games that you guys want um, or just want to go. Um, go and eat out in the city. Um, our, uh, each and every one of our professors um, unashamed, unashamedly proclaims Christianity faith um, inside and outside the classroom. So our core purpose is to teach, empower, and inspire students for services for lifelong learning. So we want to we uh, develop and transform you into um, a great student athlete that can excel um, past graduation into their career field. Um, 
our top programs at MBU is going to be education and business administration. Those are going to be our top two. And then our nursing program um, is very competitive. It's one of our most competitive programs here. We were just recently accredited uh, last year, so we're really excited about that. Um, and we've been ranked seventh for Wall Street Journal's top university for inspiration. So also excited about that. Next slide, please. What is MBU Athletics? So MBU, you've been hearing a lot about NCAA, uh, Division I, II, and III. Uh, we are not a part of the NCAA. Uh, we are a part of the NAIA. Some of you might be saying, what is that? Um, that is the National Association of Intercollegiate Athletics. Um, there's about 251 universities. It's more uh, directed for small private universities. Um, so that's what kind of comprises it. Um, they're really focused on just character-driven athletics. Um, so NAIA is much smaller. There's only about 60,000 students. Um, but um, we love our NAI uh, student athletes. Um, for the requirements given for student athletes for NAIA to be eligible, um, there's going to be a minimum of a 16 on the ACT or 860 on the SAT. Um, <clears throat> you're going to have to achieve an overall high school GPA of a 2.0 on a 4.0 scale, um, and or uh, you have to graduate in the top half of their, your class. So you're going to have to meet two of the three of those requirements. Um, that is just for NAIA eligibility. Uh, MOBAP, MBU, has a little bit different uh, for our acceptance and admission into MBU, and I'll talk a little bit more about that uh, later on in the presentation. Um, within the NAIA, though, MBU does have one of the largest, of, largest athletic departments. Uh, we have about 27, or we have 27 programs, uh, men's and women's. Uh, we have volleyball, football, basketball, esports, wrestling, soccer, track and field, bowling. Um, there's tons of them out there. And we also have six JV programs. So that's kind of like a little extension on. We still want to develop players, develop athletes, um, even if it's on the basketball team. There's only certain slots for the varsity team. So we still want to put competition out there. We still want to compete against different uh, colleges. Um, since 2002, though, we have been uh, given the Champions of Character Award. That's part of the NAIA. Um, our aim in that is just to change the culture of sport and to provide training um, to really instill values that build character and lead students, coaches, uh, administrators. Uh, and the five pillars of the Champions of Character are respect, responsibility, servant leadership, integrity, and sportsmanship. So we really strive as, um, as a university and as an athletic department to provide students um, just more development in the classroom and on the training field. So we're, we're, running, we're going for both here. Um, we just want to transform you into that uh, well-rounded individual, uh, champion of character, and we want to boost you into uh, the career field uh, post-graduation. Next slide, please. The admissions and recruitment process. So these are two different things. Um, I'll go over both of them. Uh, admissions process is uh, mandatory. Uh, you, can't, you can't go around the admissions office. Uh, that is for all universities. You're going to have to go through there. Uh, for the MOBAP, though, uh, you can apply online, mobap.edu slash apply. It is a free, um, so there's no essay, no application fee. Um, all that is is just get information from you to me. So contact information, what you're interested in at MBU. Um, all your information will go directly to your coach also, that, so that is awesome. Um, it's gonna take you maybe about 10 to 15 minutes, if that, uh, to fill that out. It's not uh, super committal, um, just to get a, more information about you. Um, there are gonna be three documents that we're gonna need. Uh, one of them is gonna be your official high school transcript. So this will come from, directly from your high school counselor. Um, we'll also need your ACT or SAT score. Those are the main two that people take. Um, SAT is a big one. So a 20 on the SAT with a 2.0 cumulative high school GPA will get you automatically admitted into MBU. That will just be automatic admitted. Um, and from there, uh, we'll also have a 1030 SAT. So that is the equivalent 1030 to 20 ACT. Um, and then the last thing, just a character reference, a letter of recommendation. Um, this is just from someone outside of the family. Um, so a non-family member that can just give you a good character reference. Um, it could be a leader in your life, a guidance counselor, a coach, um, your favorite teacher, just anybody that can just uh, boast your uh, character. Um, so the recruitment process is a little bit different than the admissions process. Um, the first thing I would recommend, a lot of schools have these, um, is just going to be this Athletics Recruit Me form. Um, ours is going to be on our website, mbuspartans.com. That is our athletics website. 
you can go to the recruit page on the top right hand side and you're going to you'll be able to click uh, mbu prospective athlete what that is is just a form that you'll fill out your name address um, all that good information that's going to take um, that, that information is going directly to the coach. It's, uh, it'll come by the admissions office, but it's going straight to the coach's email um, and they're going to be able to reach out to you then. So uh, just as Lyndon would said, take charge of the process, really um, get in contact with your student or your, your coaches. Um, you're going to be the one really driving this. Um, and so get on the coach on, on, on board with you and, uh, and, and drive that bus all the way uh, to scholarship. So um, Another thing that Littlewood said, which is great, is just send in practice and game film. Um, a lot of game film maybe was your freshman, junior, uh, freshman, sophomore, and junior year, um, and you may only have practice film uh, for your senior year because there might not be games being played. So anything that can get film um, to the coach, you could send it via email um, or text, however you're um, getting in contact with that coach, make sure you send that to them. That's going to be uh, really helpful for them. Um, another thing, visit MBU. So a visit a college. I'll say this to any freshman or any prospective freshman I talk to um, looking for any university, go and visit the college. Um, you're going to get a good feel um, about the admissions office. You're going to get a good feel of what student life is like. Just walking around campus, you'll see how they interact with each other, see the culture, uh, the experience that you could have. Really visualize yourself being set in that uh, placement, um, in that setting. So go and visit uh, when you come and visit MBU, you'll be able to come and take a tour of campus, but you'll also be able to meet with one of the coaches, whether that is a head coach, the assistant coach, or a GA. Um, after a while, um, you'll be offered a scholarship, hopefully. So this is going to be directly related with coach. For the NAIA, we have two different things here. We have athletic scholarships, and then we have academic scholarships, and they do not stack on top of each other. So I will be the one to deal with the academic scholarships. I'll talk, I can talk all day about that. Um, that is gonna be a, kind of a mix between your GPA and your, S, or your GPA and your ACT or SAT score will be your academic. But athletic scholarships is just gonna be all based on um, what the coach wants, what the coach uh, needs in his team. He might not need a point guard, like Lyndon Wood said, he might need a center this year. So. Um, that is going to be all based on coach. So get in contact, go fill out that recruit form, go fill out the application so your information can be directly related or directly towards them. Next slide. Um, lastly, uh, student experience. Um, being one of the largest NAI athletic departments, we have a great athletic training program for all of our athletes. Um, our athletic training facility rivals some D1 universities, most D2 universities. Um, we have an athletic trainer for every team, so um, they're going to be able to know your injuries, know your rehab, where you're at. They're going to know your student life. Um, we really want to connect with students in that way because we know that um, being in the AT room isn't the, the most fun thing in the world, but it needs to get done if you're an athlete. Um, so we want to treat you accordingly. Um, as I said earlier, character development, character development is huge. We want to be champions of character on and off the field. We want to develop you as a whole individual. Um, so that is huge to us and what we, we, what we are about here at MBU. Um, athletic facilities. Um, so we do have a couple of athletic facilities. I'll just name two. Spartan Field, it was completed. Uh, artificial turf uh, in 2015 with uh, about a, almost 1,200 or 12,000 square foot facility. This has locker rooms, weight room, uh, multiple locker rooms, and a weight room, meeting rooms. Um, has a ton of great uh, stuff that our student, our student athletes uh, use. Uh, we also just added um, an eight-lane competition-ready track. That was just actually uh, at the back end of this year, or at the front end of this year, we finished that off, and we're the only institution in our conference, the American Midwest Conference, to have one of those eight-lane competition-ready tracks. We also have the Carl and Dolores Petty Sports and Recreation Complex. We just call that the SRC. Um, that is a state-of-the-art sports complex. It's 40 I think it's uh, 47,000 square feet. Um, that's going to host basketball, volleyball, wrestling, cheerleading. It's going to host a ton of um, just different events on campus. It's going to be home to our Spartan Athletics. Um, so all the offices and the athletic training is going to be there too. Um, we hold multiple student events on campus too. Uh, so when you're in your free time, when you do have that free time, when you're not early morning gym or late night in the library, uh, we do have student events we love. Uh, to have. Uh, something we love to highlight though is just um, our campus, our on-campus coffee house. It's called the Perk. Uh, the Perk is the largest coffee uh, 
campus coffee house in the state of Missouri, and we'd love to have you uh, come on campus for a tour. Uh, come get a free perk drink on us, um, and come meet with us, come get a tour, and then you'll also meet with a, a, one of the coaches at that time too. So um, that concludes my time. Thank you guys for listening. I'm gonna turn it over to, to Jenny uh, for any questions that were given. Okay, thank you, Colton. So I'm going to temporarily take off this slide. Um, there will be an opportunity for you all to take a picture of this, but I just wanna go ahead and check the Q&A. Um, so unfortunately, we do not have a ton of time to answer your questions, but I just wanna go ahead and check it. It looks like as of right now, we don't have a question, but I actually have a question for all of our panelists. Um, just because we've heard so much from all of us about our different um, divisions, our different athletic conferences and facilities. So what sets us apart? If you all want to take just a moment to answer that question and then we'll see if there's any other questions that come up from there. And Jenny, excuse me a moment. This is Michelle. I'm having technical difficulties on my end, uh, but I just want to remind you all that we have five minutes left. Great. That's Thank you so much. For an hour. So I'll go ahead and take all five minutes. Um, no, I'm just kidding. So I think what separates Lindenwood or the thing that we're known for is a personal experience in higher education. Um, small class sizes, admissions, people that will follow you all the way through, academic advisors. We also have for our athletes a student athlete center that is geared towards the academics. So. It's really about the personal experience at Lindenwood, and uh, we prepare you for your next step, which is a career after your four years there. I think for us here at Westminster College, one thing that sets us aside is similar to Lindenwood, how small the school we are. We have about six to 800 students. Um, and with how hands-on we are with our different programs and our classes, we ensure that our students know their athletes and our athletes know their students. And the same goes for our professors. They know our student athletes, their education comes first, but when athletics calls, it's their time to shine. Okay, so I just have a super quick answer of what sets us apart. Uh, we're actually located right outside of the city of St. Louis. So if students are interested in the location, that is a big positive. Um, we also offer a big breadth of sports available um, as well as majors. We also have small class sizes in addition to my colleagues here. And our student athletes actually have access to a full-time head coach, assistant coach, and graduate assistants um, with our sports programs. Um, I think on the athletic side of things, it's gonna be um, our athletic trainer, um, our athletic training facility. Um, like I said, we all know rehab isn't that fun if you have surgery or an injury or something, um, but we're here. Uh, we know that that is a, a big part in athletic, the athletic world, and um, that's what kind of sets us apart is we're going to be personalized to uh, whatever happens to you. Um, but on the academic side of things, I think that what kind of sets us apart is just our um, availability in the, into the Christian uh, liberal arts institution. Like I said, we believe that faith is uh, top. Uh, it's going to be uh, we want to integrate in every aspect of the college experience. So um, that's what we kind of um, enjoy and that's what we really want uh, each student to experience. Perfect. Thank you. So I'm still not seeing any questions in the Q&A, but I do want to give another opportunity for students to get our contact information. So I'm sharing my screen now if students want to take a picture of it. Um, Again, it's our signatures, so um, feel free to reach out to us individually if you have questions. Um, maybe if you would just want to hear more about Division One and Two, or Division Three, or NAIA, that way you can kind of um, be able to follow up with us afterwards. Okay, so it looks like. Ms. Larashi is trying to share her screen. Oh my goodness. You're not seeing anything though. <laughs> You're not seeing my screen? Mm -mm. Oh, wow. 
Okay. Well, on my end, it says I'm screen sharing. So I apologize. Apparently, there's some technical difficulties on my end. So I uh, want to thank our presenters. Round of applause uh, for you all. Can you, I hope you can hear me at least. Uh, thank you guys. That was awesome. I learned a lot and hope our students and families tuning in did as well. Um, students, just a reminder that uh, you can sign up for more sessions over the next four weeks at moacac.org. The recording for this session, if you want to check it out again, will be um, also hosted on our website in the next couple of days. And uh, lastly, students, as soon as I push uh, end, you will get a very quick four question survey. Hopefully that will appear on your side. And we would appreciate you taking uh, 30 seconds to fill out that four question survey. So again, thank you to our panelists and everyone have a great evening. Bye-bye. Hey.